In today's lesson, we will be working with square roots and cube roots, but we will be problem solving, which really just means story problems. All right, let's get started. The area of a square boxing ring is 484 feet squared. What is the perimeter? Well, it sounds like a short story problem, but there's actually a lot to it. Let's look here. We have area of a square. How do you find area of a square? Area equals length times width. So we've got length and we have width. But what do you know about squares? All squares have the same side, length and side. So another way that we can write this is instead of length and width, side and side, because they're the same. So maybe instead of length times width, we're going to write side times side. And anytime you multiply a number by itself, what it means is that number squared. So even though we have learned length times width in the past, we're going to use this formula for area of a square. The area equals the side squared. And now this boxing ring, the area equals 484 feet squared. 484 feet squared. What is the perimeter? Well, before we can even get to perimeter, we need to figure out what does S equal? What is the length of one side? Because all we know is the area. All right, so I'm going to rewrite that formula, plugging in 484 in for the area, and we can solve for the other variable. So 484 is the area equals side squared. Now, to figure out what number when you square it gives you a number, you have to do the opposite. How do you undo something squared? You would square root it. Square root it. So what is the square root of 484? That will give you the value of s. All right, so the square root of 484 is 22. But that's not the end of this question. So far, what we've done here is we've found the, the length of one side. And they're asking, what is the perimeter? Well, let's see. The length of this side is 22, which means the length of this side is 22. This side is 22, and the last side is 22. So to find perimeter, you just add up. You just add up all sides. 22 plus 22 plus 22 plus 22, which is also 4 times 22. And 4 times 22 is 88. 88 feet. So it looks like a lot, but really all we're doing to find the length of one side, you square root the area, and then you multiply by four to get the perimeter. Not too bad. All right, let's keep working. The formula D equals 16T squared. I'm going to rewrite that. D equals 16T squared represents the approximate distance D in feet, a skydiver falls in T seconds. Well, let's make a little note of that. They just said the variable D represents feet. And the variable T represents seconds. So imagine yourself jumping out of an airplane, you're skydiving. This formula will tell you how many feet you fall after how many seconds? All right, so of course, the formula assumes there's no air resistance, but now we have to find the time. Solving for time, a skydiver takes to fall 
816 feet before opening the parachute. So they give you a formula, and they give you a distance, and they tell you to find the time. They say that the distance is 800 and, whoops, 816 feet, and then we have to find T, find the time. So I'm going to rewrite that original formula, except I'm plugging 816 in for D. So 816 equals 16 times t squared. And we have to solve for t. So this is bringing back some memories here. Solving the equations, we need to get that variable by itself. On the last example, well, we did that square root. But we can't square root because we have the number in front of that t squared. And 16 is being multiplied by t. How do you undo multiplication? You would divide. And if you remember solving equations, whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So 816 divided by 16 is 51 equals what's left over on the right side, just t squared. All right, so now to solve for t, how do we undo something squared? we must square root, square root. So what that does is that leaves us with just t. And now what is the square root of 51? Well, when you take the square root, you'll get a decimal, but we can round. It's about 7.14. And since we're solving for t, we just solved for seconds, 7.14 seconds. And if you think about what we just figured out, it will take 7.14 seconds to drop 816 feet. Okay, here is the third problem. This time we're involving a cube, which means instead of area, we're talking about volume. And instead of two dimensions, we're talking about three-dimensional figure. So the volume of a perfect cube, meaning um, all side lengths are the same. So um, we have length times width times height, but all side lengths are the same. So just like in the square when we did side times side, you could think of it as side times side times side. All right, so... The volume of a perfect cube is 512 inches cubed. What is the length of one side? So let's go back, see volume. So we know is length times width times height, but all sides are the same, so volume equals side times side times side. And then anything multiplied by itself three times, it would be saying volume equals side to the third power. And we know what the volume is. What we don't know is the length of one side. The volume is 512 inches cubed. And to find the length of one side, well, let's see. Let's plug in what we know in for V. 512 equals side to the third power. So, how do we figure out, let's see, when you uh, take a number to the third power and you get 512, to figure out what that number is, you have to undo that cube. Undo something to the third power, and instead of square root, we're going to cube root. Cube root. So when you cube root something cubed, you're left with just that length of the side, and then the cube root of 512 is 8. So the length of one side is 8, and you can check because 8 times 8 times 8 equals 512. All 
All right, so here is the last question. We have to figure out which is greater, either the solution to this rounded to the nearest tenth or the number 8.6. All right, so I'm looking at x squared equals 73. And then I'm also looking at the number 8.6 and have to decide, well, which one is bigger? Well, how in the world do I figure this out? What they're asking for is, what value of x makes this true? And is that value uh, greater than, larger than, or smaller than 8.6? So to figure this out, we have to, let's see, what number when you square it is 73? To figure that out, you just have to undo the square by taking the square root. Square root undoes that power. Square root, so x equals, what is the square root of 73? And you'll get a long decimal, but it's about 8.544 and so on. And we want to round to the nearest tenth. So if you look at the four, tells you to keep the five. So x equals 8.5 is the solution to this equation, which is smaller than 8.6. So which number is greater? 8.6 is the greater number. So there is your full lesson on problem solving with square roots and cube roots. Good luck with the lesson.